Hello and thank you for joining me once again. I'm so excited for today's little challenge. In my array of ideas of quilt pattern theme pages that I've been slowly putting up, I had one in there that I was looking at called the Slipknot. And it is basically the quilted knot that uh, Creative Memories came out with. So I went in and grab my notes I had and I said I'm going to decipher this one and uh, get the instructions out to you. So I'll take you to the craft room and I'll show you how you can uh, make that quilted knot um, pattern with the template without using a template, just your rulers and cutting tools and it's only basically five cuts. Really, really simple. So we'll go in there and have some fun with that one and you can make a nice title page for an album and some other really fancy stuff with it. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. I've got my instruction sheet out here. Um, I did my test demo template yesterday. That's the one I made yesterday. So I'm gonna try, then I went through, wrote all my instructions up, and now I'm going through it again just to make sure everything's correct. Um, if this doesn't work out, I will modify these before I post the final copy to my links that you will find in the description below. So for the uh, quilted pattern, we're ignoring the inside part. So we're just working with the outside page. For this template, you need at least three shades of paper. Um, for my test one, I did do three different papers in the shades of pink because I thought it gave it a little bit more character. But at least three to get your contrast going and you should be all set. What else you'll need? You'll need to set up. You'll need your instructions. You need your cutting mat. You need a background paper or page to build your um, quilted knot on. Uh, this time I'm going to do the white. You're going to need your 12 inch trimmer. Your zero centering ruler will come in handy. Uh, adhesive, I'm uh, recommending the repositional adhesive in case you need to juggle some things around a little bit. And then um, your uh, paper, you'll need a pencil to do some notes. So for my three pages I'm gonna do for this example, I'm using um, a little bit of uh, brushed silver that I've had from way back when and I'm playing with the paper pack that we got in the Christmas uh, quad four bundle paper. I thought this would be really nice and festive. So my background A paper here will be the darker one for the back and then I'm going to use the wider next wider band with this one and my little finite one will be in the silver. It doesn't take a lot of paper to make this. I've already cut my strips and I still have lots of paper left. So I could probably do a double page spread if I wanted to. So let's get going. Uh, the only notes I, I made on here with the measuring notes is that when I do my measurements um, on your page, the template always gives you a half inch border around the edge. So in theory, your inside edge here of your frame should be 11 inches because you're going a half inch each. So the base of this paper should be five and a half and five and a half. But because the template always does the little guttering around, um, this edge should be a little bit less than five and a half. So in my instructions, I will tell you that you're going to cut it and then I say um, go to the two and a three quarter inch mark and then I'm going to go one half shy. So I'm going to go one line shy of the uh, two and three quarter inch mark. I'm taking off one sixteenth of an inch. So you're going to be going at seven and two and seven sixteenths here. And to say two and seven two and seven sixteenths sometimes it's hard to find on a ruler whereas if i say go to two and three quarters and then go back just shy of that line by one hash mark it's a little bit easier for you to follow 
So I've done those little notes. I've highlighted all my measurements because cut measure twice, cut once. It always helps. <laughs> so let's start. First off, you're going to do your base for your trim. And like I said, they have the um, half inch border the whole way around the page. So to duplicate that, we're going to take our zero centering ruler and you go in two hash lines, right? So I'm going to go from the edge of the page, two lines in, go right from edge to edge, and that will be my half inch mark. Nice and easy. And I can go ahead and sketch that in half inch from the edge there half inch from the edge here. Before I leave this space, I am going to go to my zero line and mark the center of that page so I can line up my grids. Easy enough to do. Rotate your mat. Do it around on all the other sides. I've already taken care of the other sides because you don't need to see me do that four times. <laughs> Next step is to prep and cut your strips. Uh, step one with shade A, which is the outside shade here. I need four strips of paper and I'm doing it in the darker blue. So there's my four strips of paper and I'm going to cut them one and a half inches wide, which I've done. And then with, once I'm done that, I'm going to take my four strips of paper and I'm going to stack them all up so they're nice and easy and I'm going to cut them at the 11 inch mark and the five and a half inch mark. So I'm going to take off one inch from the top and just because it's easier to see, I'm going to go on the light side here. So one inch from the end here, I can cut all four of them at once. It's out of the way so you can follow along. One inch, everything stacked nicely. If you're cutting all four at once, you want to do make sure that you have measured correctly because you're messing up all your pieces at the same time. And then we're going again at the five and a half inch mark on this trimmer. It's right to the end of the blue. I did mark it with pencil. So there's my five and a half inch mark right to the end. Nice and flush. And that one's done. Now for these cuts, you can try stack all eight pieces or you can do them in two groups, whatever you feel the most comfortable. Because this has silver foil in it, I will split it in two. The next step on this one is to create your mitered edge and <clears throat> get rid of your angle. Some people add that little piece of cardboard so they don't go over the 45 line. I just line it up very carefully and hold it steady. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along my 45 degree line and I'm going to take my point to the end because I want to make a nice point there. Now again with this one because I want to get that guttering if I go over that little edge a little bit that's fine because you kind of want to take away that 1 16th of an inch. So we're going to go across here and we're going to create our mitered border. Now here in the end, we are going to be making a trapezoid. So rather than rotating the thing like we normally do to make a parallelogram, we're going to go this way and we're going to flip it directly over and we're going to make our edge again. So again, keep them all nice and flush. I'm going in here over the line along the 45. And you can see I am now going to be five and a half inches here and my inside edge is going to be smaller. And that is the diagram I want. All set. Piece number A has all been cut. Like I said, there's only five cuts we're doing here. Um, shade B, which is the wider one here. We're going to start with two one and a quarter inch strips. We've got them nicely stacked. And again, we're going to go along the 45 degree mark to make our mitered point. So once again, we're just sliding it down here to the edge along our 45. 
hold them together nicely. And we're cutting our nice point. And you're gonna save all these little pieces. We'll make something with it afterwards. And then so we're done that, we're gonna rotate. So this is the one we're rotating all the way around. So we're gonna end up making a parallelogram. And we're going to the two and three quarter inch mark. And I have the note we're going one shy. So there is the two and three quarter inch line right there. And one shy is just about that much shy. Because if I go one sixteenth on each end, it will give me my one eighth gap that they usually have on the templates. So that's two strips and I have to make four strips. So I'm going to do that same thing again. I'm going to slide up going to my two and three quarter inch mark, which is here. And I'm going to back down one little bit, staying along my 45 degree line. That one's all done. Two down. Your waist. Next uh, cut, we're going on to part number C here, which is the same shade, but we're doing this little triangle here. So we're going to start with two one and five eight inch squares, which I've already pre-cut. And these two one and five inch eight inch squares, we're going to cut across on the diagonal. So when you're working on the diagonal on your creative memories trimmer, again, you can run across your cut line. This one's been used a few times, so my groove is a little deeper, easier to see. Lay my blade down. And again, you do have your vision lines here. Come up a little closer so you can see. You can run your little track up and you can make sure that you're going right over that little tip. So that one looks good. And if I slide my blade down the other way, I do have a vision line on the inside edge here and I can double check it from both sides that I'm over my blade. So if that's all in place, nothing moves going up and down as I was showing you. So we can cut this in half and that step's done for that piece. We have the four pieces we need. All right, we're trucking light right along here. Next one is our last uh, set of colors, which is going to be our one inch strips. So we're going one and a half, one and a quarter to one. So three increment sizes going down. I'm gonna take my two strips, I'm gonna stack them. Again, I'm gonna make my mitered point. So I'm gonna slide real nice along the edge here. 45 degree line going in here I have a nice point yummy yummy all right from here add that to my scrap pile I'm going to rotate and I'm going to go to the two and a half inch mark and this time I want to go one hash mark over so I'm going to go to the two and a half inch mark to start there's my two and a half And then I'm going to go up just a little bit more and give that a cut. And then we're going to do that a second time. Make sure these stay nicely together. We're good. I'm going to the two and a half and I'm going up one little bit more. There we go, that's our scraps again. So we have these four pieces. Our last piece we're doing is part E and we're starting with a square that is one and three eighths square. So one and three eighths by one and three eighths. And once again, I am going to cut this one in half. And 
and there we have it. Done like dinner. All right. All our pieces are now cut. We're ready for assembly. Wasn't that easy? With our assembly, we're going to use our repositional tape. I'm not going to tape it down just because I'll just show you how everything goes. I'll go back and tape it after. So there's piece number one. We're going to slide in between the corner along our um, border line, in between the corner and our little um, center line that we placed in there. And there's number two. And we'll go around the page. Our second edge will be our next size down the and we are going to run our parallelogram along that same line that we have coming out of the corner, that 45 degree angle. So that one's sitting in there nicely. And the second piece is going to go here. Same thing coming out of this corner, following that line. And there we have it. Our last pieces are going to fit in these spaces. And your layout's complete. Just have to go back and tape it down. You recall I said don't throw away those extra little pieces, just store them on the side. So when you're done, your option is the little edges that you cut off these outside pieces. If you run around the eight sides here, you can make a little star for your inside pattern. Alternatively, if you want to run your 4x6 photo in there, you can switch some of these around. And it will give you your nice matted space to complete that photo. One final note uh, on these layouts, when you're done, your inside dimensions are about five and a half by five and a half. So you can crop down a four by six photo and it will fit in there. Or you can, before you stick these corners down, you can run them underneath, which would also look uh, quite nice. Um, alternatively to that one, this one here, I did mat a, a four by four photo. You can go up to four and a quarter with your mat and it will sit nicely within the page and a note for that one if you do have it now this is not a hex it's an octagon so you can't the uh, can't use your hex to cut your shape but if you do have the border punch the first one that creative memories came out with it does have the one that will snip your corner at a straight angle like so and then it'll fit really nicely in your page so grab this punch and you're all set and one more thing before you go, all those little scrap pieces that you cut off and set off to the side, grab them and throw them on a card and make a little card with the little pieces that you were trimming from your scraps before you they all hit the bin. Have a good afternoon. Look forward to hearing from you soon. Tell your friends to jump on and subscribe to my channel. And let's have some fun.